Socializing, sports, and sales all have the same components. When you consciously apply principles and tactics that you're already familiar with, they can make you a very persuasive individual. Greetings and salutations, everybody. What's happening good? Eli's dad here with Project Eli, where we educate, lead, and inspire with our next session on sales and persuasion. I'm going to sell you and Eli something that you already know today. You're okay with that, aren't you? Well, Eli, it's time to get down to the nitty-gritty, structurally speaking, in today's lesson on sales and being persuasive. You see, my son, there are three things in life that feature the same elements for their successful execution. They are socializing, sports, and sales. All three have an approach, a warm-up, a presentation, and a close. Let's get started and illustrate the similarities. Let's start with the approach. When you're socializing, and you know what I mean by that, Romeo, I mean Eli, your initial approach must put the object of your attentions at ease and generate some interest simultaneously. Isn't that right? So, I would strongly advise that you delete, yo, pretty mama, what it is, what it was, and what it could be, as your initial opening line. In fact, that very first contact is usually the most difficult aspect in the approach. How do you solve that? Well, at the school dance, that's easy. Would you like to dance? Will work fine. Why? Because it's something that you have in common. Your opening parry should contain something that the person that you're speaking with can identify with or cling to. Ideally, something that the other person can nod their head and smile at you in return. One must assume that if a young lady is attending the school dance, she intends to dance. Simple. So the key is to figure out in what situation you find yourself in what that person considers to be an appropriate dance. This is where your creativity comes into play. But don't overthink it. It's not usually that difficult to find something that you may say to pay a sincere, complimentary comment that puts the other person at ease that will elicit a nod of the head and or a smile. Relaxed body language, language will also serve to reinforce what you verbalize and put the other person at ease too. When you exude comfort with yourself that transfers that feeling of comfort and ease to another person, take a moment and reflect how you put a young shy child at ease and make them comfortable. Same principles different level of maturity. As I said, you're already doing it. You just need to tweak your methods a bit because the audience is more mature in most cases. Now the approach in sports is also essential. Getting yourself mentally ready to compete. Establishing a laser focus on your objective. Taping your ankles or laying out your uniform or getting some extra rest or sleep or timing your food consumption to enable you to compete without your stomach being full, or studying the characteristics of your opponent, that is, is he left-handed, right-handed, a good shooter, or a good dribbler, or a good rebounder. The accomplished competitor recognizes the importance of approaching the contest with some serious preparation and mental readiness. And sales, Eli? Well, did you map out the route to your sales destination? I'm not just talking about physical location, I'm also referring to the game plan, materials needed, expected objections, expected needs, problems, and limitations, the scouting report, like in sports, good sense of humor, totally serious, younger, older, financial capabilities, liberal, conservative, and so on. Anything you can deduce from the scouting report will help your approach. Two things to look for and keep in mind. First, what is the dance that they came to the dance to dance? Second, what does the scouting report tell you as far as do's and don'ts? Body language? Confident and relaxed be because of your confidence. Be sure to be confident and not arrogant. Appropriately firm handshake, depending upon the gender. Seek to begin the conversation with something that will elicit a nod and a smile if appropriate and just a nod if it's not appropriate, 
As an example, if you're a funeral director, don't be looking for a smile. Let me give you an example. I've already told you that I went door knocking when I was in the insurance business. I also went door knocking when I worked for the U.S. Olympic Committee as a fundraiser prior to the 1984 Olympic Games. At that time, I was also the assistant varsity basketball coach at the local high school. Now this particular high school was located in a very affluent part of the Bay Area in California. Here was my approach. I would knock on the door using a friendly knock. In this instance, I prospected a neighborhood with very nice houses. The people that lived in the neighborhood had a very strong sense of community. You see, Eli, people that live in expensive homes usually have lived in them for a number of years and they all know their neighbors and have ties to the community. When the homeowner would answer the door, this is what I'd say. Hi, my name is Eli's dad. I'm one of the basketball coaches at the high school. I've been asked to talk to folks here in the area about the upcoming Olympic Games. May I come in? I was dressed as a teacher would dress button-down shirt and tie with a tie loosely undone at the knot. I had a pencil behind my ear and a clipboard in my hand. In many cases, I was recognized as a coach, and in some cases, when there were students present, they would recognize me and say hello. The key part of this enterprise was the approach. Once I got into the house, getting a contribution was ice cream. It was tax deductible and even included some tickets to attend an exhibition volleyball game by the Olympians. There were perhaps 50 or so people like me that were in the Bay Area raising funds. I received a commission for my efforts and was the number one fundraiser not only in the Bay Area, but the entire state of California. I even won a color TV for my work from the committee. The key reason for my success was my approach at the door. When making an approach, it's a good idea to think about your strengths and advantages. I had the advantage of community. I dressed the part, and I had something in common to offer my prospect. Loyalty to the community, patriotism for the country, and the fact that it was a tax-deductible contribution. It's always a good idea to go with your strengths. Two quick examples. I have one friend that is incredibly good-looking. That is, he's literally tall, dark, and handsome. Now he knows that he's a looker, and when he wanted to make friends, as they say, he would just give a warm smile and be relaxed. Now I have another friend that is not such a handsome individual, but is quite possibly the funniest and most charismatic person that I know. He could always find something to say that would make everybody smile and laugh, and he has the uncanny ability to make you feel like you're the most important person in the world by the way he pays attention to you when you're talking. You see, we all have strengths to offer that are unique. Sometimes they're based on circumstances. Sometimes they're based on personal traits. Sometimes they're based on personality traits. And there are many more ways to use your strengths in the approach. The one thing that they all have in common is they are bond forming. Eli, when you're making an approach, think about your strengths, the scenario, and a relaxed smile as tools to help you bond. In fact, it's more than okay to practice smiling to yourself in the mirror. In fact, I recommend it because becoming effortless in virtually any task requires significant effort. Now, Eli, I've given you a large amount of information to digest in this session. As in all the lessons on sales and persuasion, I can't suggest strongly enough that you go over this material numerous times. Just as knowledge is not a flower to be, that you can pluck, sales is an exercise that takes practice, repetition, concentration, and trial and error. Michael Jordan can't teach you to shoot from just reading a book that he wrote. You actually have to pick up the ball to play better, repeatedly, right? Now, when we resume our lessons next time, we'll discuss the art of the warm-up. In the venue of sales, this is a critical piece to master to establish rapport and how to tailor your presentation to add value for your client. 
please make sure that you've clicked on the red subscribe icon and rung the bell next to it to guarantee you'll receive this all-important content to be persuasive. As always, I strongly urge you to review the description box if, you, if you're serious about your progress. My aim is clarity, so please ask questions, deliver feedback, and offer constructive criticism so that you, will, you may help me to help Eli and you. Our thought for the day? Don't just wing it. Think, prepare, plan, and rehearse your approach. This applies to socializing, sports, and sales. And because we never end our meetings on a philosophical note, get out there and charge! I'm Eli's dad.